What should we expect from Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC? Yeah, so this is going to be a video about one image that appears in one tweet that simply tells us that Elden Ring's DLC is coming. And I'm going to try and make this a good video because, yes, I am going to present some truly unhinged speculation about the contents of the DLC, but most importantly, this is actually the perfect excuse to discuss a few things that we have. I remember waiting for a Sekiro one. This channel. My video example, is a lore goat. Yeah, I watch a lot of those videos. Whose mysterious origins are clearly being teased here, and I also want to talk about. Is that the Lady God Godiva? No, that is. Uh, that's a dude, and that's Mikola. I'm like eighty percent sure that that is Mikola riding Torrent. I'm pretty sure this is a prequel side of the Erd Tree, which is absolutely a huge part of the lore already. So my goal in this video, even if my predictions are wrong, is to at least gear you up with some knowledge about the game's lore that you can take with you no matter where the DLC actually takes us. And my other goal with this video is to let you know that my art book is currently 10% off for a limited time. First and foremost, let's talk about who is riding Torrent in this image, because out of everything I talk about in this video, this is the thing that I'm most certain of. Now, at first, when I saw this, my mind went immediately to it being Queen Marika because of that braided golden hair. They all From stuff has always been kind of strange with time, I think Sekiro having parts in the past, but your arm and gear is from the future. Yeah, I mean, true. I mean, it could be that this is Mikola from the past and the future. Who knows? But this is definitely Mikola from the past. It has to be, right? Because isn't Mikola like all distorted now? All repped and corrupted from, uh, what's his name? Moog. And she, and they, I say she, and he has Torrent. Remember, Torrent was originally owned by Mikola, and so were the Spirit Bell. And the, and the things you got from, uh, what's your fucking face? Ronnie. They were all from Mikola, right? So it makes sense. Also riding Torrent sitting in a side saddle manner, which was historically a way for a woman to sit on horseback with dignity. I know Mikola has dress. eternal youth, but it wasn't, weren't they corrupted by, by Moog? Like they're all distorted and corrupted inside the little like blood, blood seed thing, correct? character is also wearing a similarly placed upper armband. So while it's definitely possible that this could be a young Marika, I still think that that's nowhere near as likely as the alternative I'm about to suggest, which is that this person is Mikla, who was one of Marika's many demigod children. So item descriptions and dialogue all refer to Mikola as a he. However, Mikola does have the feminine side to match the person riding Torrent in this image. I mean, like also we have to consider the idea that Mikola might be both, right? Just how Queen Merica is also Redagon. Mikola could have two sides, just like their parent. have a feminine alter ego called Saint Trina. Uh, if any of this is news to you, then I recommend you go and watch my recent 47 minute long lore video on Mikola that explains so much about their character. Uh, but in that video, I talked about all the known statues of Mikola, which feature them in a long garb that actually cuts off at the elbow. And looking back, this is the exact same garb that this character is wearing. What's more, the hair here, while it is braided, like Marika's, it's also long and flowing, and just the style is identical to Mikola's, as you can clearly oh, see. Oh, you've seen this video already? <laughs> cinematic. Marika's hair, by contrast, is always symbolically depicted as two standalone braids. And not to mention, depictions of Marika are always of her in full womanhood, but this figure is meek and they're childlike by comparison. So, in my eyes, this is definitely Mikola who was cursed to eternal childhood. Also, in regards to the tweet, it does say, rise tarnished and let us walk a new path together, which kind of reminds me of what I said in the recent Mikola video, where I speculated a lot about how Mikola's intent might be to plant a new world order and perhaps to walk a new Possible. path. Possible. 
So if we are correctly assuming that this is Mikola, then we can also finally start to unravel the mystery surrounding Torrent, your spectral steed. And that's important because Torrent is not just some random mount. He's a full-on character. And for whatever reason, he chose you as his tarnished, down to the very moment where he sniffs you out in the stranded graveyard. Melina is actually an unwitting part of this plan to find and guide you. She has no real memory or knowledge of whatever plot that she's a part of, beyond following Torrent's own guidance, which she then passes on to you by giving you a golden ring, which doubles as a whistle. Someone who does seem to know a bit more about Torrent is Rani, who you might remember at the very start of the game entrusts you with three. Yeah, lonely those are from Mikola, right? Because I, that's what I assume is that Mikola had these wolves and gave them to you as a gift for some reason, which I don't really understand unless she all unless Mikola also gave Torrent to to Millennia and then took her took her not Millennia, Melina, and then took her memories away. I don't know. It's weird. Strange. The idea that Mikola, maybe Mikola is like playing 40 chess. Who knows? And they give you a spirit calling bell as well. And Rani says that these are from Torrent's former master. I'd heard tell of a tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. I was entrusted this for thee by Torrent's former master. Now, you could argue that she's referring to Melina as Torrent's former master here, but then that doesn't really make sense, because why would Rani bother to hide Melina's identity as Torrent's former master if we've met Melina already? So I think that Torrent's former master is surely some other yeah, third Mikola, party. Yeah, for sure. Someone who is clearly very in tune with spirits, considering Torrent is himself a spirit, and considering the spirit calling bell and the three lone wolves are all from the same person. Speaking of the three wolf spirits, there's actually a relief in Faramazula that depicts three wolves crowded around a small, slight figure. I mean, Whoever owned that's... Torrent would have also... That's like the red writing on the board, right? I mean, that's that's it. I mean, that's pretty clear. So owned the three wolf spirits. So I've always wondered if this image was depicting Torrent's former master, and whoever Torrent's former master was, they were someone that was able to compel both Melina and Rani to seek you out on their behalf. My best guess until now was that it was Marika doing this, as we know she goes to great lengths to help the Tarnished. Even Hugh forges weapons for you on Marika's behalf, and he even speaks of a spirit caller that he once knew. So, yeah, I always thought the spirit caller might have been Marika until now, because considering this image, I think we really have to entertain the possibility that Torrent's former master could have been Mikola. As you may know, Mikola had a famous ability to compel the affection and loyalty of others. So it's also very easy to think then that Rani, Melina, Torrent, and even Hugh might have intervened to assist you on Mikola's behalf. Mikola was also a talented craftsman who might have crafted the golden spectral steed whistle ring. Anyway, for now, this is just all speculation, but at the very least, I think we are getting closer to learning about Torrent's former master here, for sure. And finally, what's with the dark Erd tree in the distance? This is the last thing I want to discuss because this is the thing I think you can be the least sure So of I thought right? that this was after the ending of the game. That's what I assumed. But then again, like, what ending would this be? For the Erd Tree. The only ending I can think of that like hurts the Erd Tree or devastates it, really, is the one where you give up Tarnit, give up Torrent, and become the uh the chaos entity or whatever his name is. That's the only one I can think of. The other ones don't really kill the tree. They change its color, but the tree's still alive. So I don't know what this would be unless this is like a prequel. I'm kind of just going to throw a lot of theories at the wall and see if anything sticks. But it's a really fascinating concept. So, yeah, this frenzy tree flame is, ending. Happened to this Erd tree, well, I thought the frenzy flame ending, right? That's what my initial thought was. But like, it doesn't look like the frenzied flame ending. 
it looks like two smaller versions of the Erd tree. Because the, the Erd tree itself is like huge. It's like twice. I mean, obviously perspective. Maybe I'm not. We're not close enough to look. Be like looking at this, but it looks like it looks like two trees. But the lady on the horse, it's a guy. The guy on the horse uh, is the tarnished as the Elden Lord. What? What? I can't. I don't. I don't understand that line of thought. Yeah, I agree. I think this happens before the actual ending of the game. This could be a new true. Uh, be a new true ending as well. Hmm. Hmm. The hell tree is as big as the Erd tree. Oh, is it? Huh. And it does still seem to be a source of light, just like the Erd tree is in game, except now it has a weak golden light that filters from behind its branches. At first, I thought it might be oh. Mikola's Halig tree, which does seem to oh, yeah, it does, in actually. a similar manner. And as we discussed in this video, Mikola's Halig tree Oh. is a sort of Erd tree, although it is an Erd tree that has already split and withered, so I'm not that drawn to this theory. And actually, if you look closely, it's almost as if there's two trees here. Yeah. One that is straighter, like the Erd tree, that has a streak of gold within it, and a light filtering behind its branches, and then there's another tree that is almost twisting around it. Almost as if it's see. This looks to me. This tree. looks to me like a representation of Moog struggling and choking out Mikola. That's how. That's how I. That's how I interpret this. Is that Moog is absorbing Mikola, and this is a, rep a representation of it. And literally could be sapping the vitality from it. The only entity that I'd think would be capable of this, in the current game at least, would be Godwin's Black Deathroot. This would certainly explain the colour of the trees, the strangling behaviour, and the sort of black falling decay that they have. And if Mikola is part of this DLC, then you'd I, say, I wore a Godwin dress through like 90% of the game. ...part of things as well, considering how... The person on the horse is most history. definitely Mikola, though. It's not even that. I don't think it's even a consideration. It's definitely Mikola. Histories are, but of course this is all just one line of speculation. You can go down so many. Uh, you can also try to think about when this event might occur. And I feel like you can make valid arguments for and against it being in almost every time period. If it's in the past, that explains Mikola's healthy state and Torrent being unsettled by you, but then it doesn't explain the state of the Erd tree. And if it's in the future, then it might suggest that this takes place after you become Elden Lord. But then, what if I chose the Frenzy ending? I feel How like if they want to make sure to like stay continuity-wise and not make there be like a, a correct ending for the game, which I think that like not having a correct ending for the game makes it kind of cool. Because then, like, everyone's choices mattered in some way. If they want to, like, skirt that, this has to be a prequel. Otherwise, they're going to be infringing on everyone's choices. Which I don't think they want to do. I don't think they want that to happen. ...torrent from you. Shouldn't Mikola's future be with Moog? And then there's the theory that this could be some sort of alternate reality altogether. Whether now, alternate past, reality present. is cool because, like, isn't there like, and you can you can correct me on this learn your game if you want, but isn't the Erd tree connected to like that like thousands of different like places, different realms, different different versions of the world? It's kind of like um. Like Nordrasil or not Nordrasil, um, Yggdrasil. It's like it's like a tree that connects all realities. All past DLCs have been added to the mid game. Hmm. Well, I mean, Elden Ring is a is a brand new way to go about it. Maybe they changed their their motive motif. It could be mid game too, but.
maybe they changed their uh, outlook and made it a different version of the game. Because, like, it, pretty much Elden Ring re redefined how they do it. FromSoft does a lot of alternate realities, yeah. Every Dark Soul player is an alternate... Yeah, okay. So if that's the case, then this could just be an alternate reality of the regular Elden Ring game. Or an alternate universe where Mikola is, like, still not being taken over by Moog. ...or future, and I quite like this idea, considering Mikola has a whole storyline where they also exist... I, I'm gonna say it now, and we can come back and talk about this later, whenever it gets closer, but, like, I'm gonna say now that... I think the DLC will be a new game. Like, I think that you will actually go into go into Elden Ring and it'll say, do you want to play the DLC? And it'll be a brand new, different version of the game. Not like a full-fledged game, but it'll be a full brand new version. Who knows? That's just a theory. Escape as their alias, which is Saint Trina. And also, the landscape here doesn't really look like the lands between that we know. The mountains seem too low, the wheat field seems too vast, so what if this is some sort of spirit realm? And speaking of spirit realms, the Erd Tree being black, and the spirit graves, and Torrent, who is also a spirit... Oh, it could also take wanna... place, like he said, in the spirit realm, maybe while Mikola's inside the seed, in Moog's castle, maybe while he's in the seed, this is playing out in his brain. I don't know. I'll talk about the black lampwood of the Helfen. To a lot of you, those random words I just said probably made no sense. They're actually words that only really show up in one item description. Uh, but if you weren't aware, the Helfen is described as being a sort of dark counterpart to the Erd Tree in the sense that it also offers a type of guidance, except its guidance is offered to the heroic dead of the spirit world. We talk more about the Helfen and the Lampwood and I haven't gotten that sword. In this I want that sword on death. So if you're interested in speculating down that particular rabbit hole, I'd recommend that video. To be honest though, Shadow of the Erd Tree is such an extremely evocative title that there really are so many things that I think it could be referring to. For example, a big part of me wonders if we're supposed to reject the first impression that this image gives us. Remember when Elden Ring's first cinematic trailer dropped and everyone thought that Radigan was shattering the Elden Ring? That's clearly what the trailer wanted you to think, considering the narration, but really, Radigan was actually repairing the Elden Ring, and the true story was way more complex. So I feel like we shouldn't rule out the possibility that this image might not depict the Erd Tree dying, what if this image is instead depicting a scene from long ago, back when the Erd Tree was first coming into existence? This is an idea I put forward in my earliest lore video for Elden Ring, and in that video I stated that an existing great tree might have been taken over by the parasitic Golden Erd Tree. I mean, that makes and sense too, because admit, of what we know, the Great Elden Beast is like a parasite, basically. The Great Elden Beast reminds me of the thing from Attack on Titan. I was way too sure of myself when I presented that theory. I basically presented it as fact, which was wrong. Uh, however, I still think that that theory has some validity, because we do know... The Elden the Beast is the Celtic last boss in the game. It's, a, it's, the, it's the, the beast that gives people power through the Elden Ring. And you kill it. No, it's just a huge... It's a huge fucking, like, transparent conglomerate of worm things. I don't know. It's like... I don't know how to explain it. It's just a huge... It's a huge, like, beast worm with worm appendages. But it's, like, see-through and golden. ...life existed within the primordial Erd tree. And we know that the Crucible was related to Great Tree ornamentation, as shown by the Crucible Knights. And there are suggestions that the Great Tree Roots are a distinct thing from Erd Tree Roots. So, 
I do think that it's worth considering that a great tree existed before the Erd tree and that the Erd tree might have taken it over in a sense. So, so I, I think that what happens when we go to the, the tree is we, I think we break the Elden Ring again. I think we break it and then we reforge it to what we want. Which I think is the whole point, right? You go there to break the Elden Ring and reforge it to be what you want it to be. Forward that theory again for consideration. However, moving on, last theory on the Erd Tree. I do want to mention that shadow and darkness are kind of already related to the Erd Tree via the two fingers. Despite how ironic that might sound, right? You wouldn't think that darkness and shadow are related to this tree that is all about warmth and light and abundance, but darkness does play a part. Servants of the Two Fingers were known to cast spells such as Darkness and Assassin's Approach, which helped them in assassinating the tarnished that had strayed from the Guidance of Grace. Not to mention the Two Fingers, being these envoys of the Greater Will, were capable of bestowing beastly, living shadows to prominent characters most notably Rani, who was given Blythe, and Marika, who was given Malekith. So the title could be referring to these shadows, but again, I really am throwing all kinds of ideas out now, so they really could be doing anything when it comes Rip to the Blythe. setting and the time period of it all. So what do you think? But moving on from the Erd Tree and Torrent and their rider, what else do we see in this image? Well, again, there are these ghostly graves with holes in their center. And funnily enough, in a recent Secrets video, we talked about how From Software loves reusing these cut God's Grave assets from Dark Souls 3. And the asset actually has reappeared in Elden Ring already. There's one grave just like these at Morn Castle, where you fight the Leonine Misbegotten. It's also not the first instance of physical objects having a ghostly presence in the world. You can also see this in Landell with the ghostly flagpoles. And I'll be honest, I don't really know what this means beyond it being a sort of spiritual overlap of worlds, perhaps? Or maybe these are time periods that persist spiritually somehow? I don't know. And then you can also see a couple of stone coffins in the image as well. These stone coffins appear all over the lands between, and it's here that you might have picked up a ton of runes uh, if you could have defeated the wolves that often guard these sort of cemeteries. Anyway. I'm getting the vibe that there's going to be quite a long wait until Elden Ring's DLC is ready. I'm kind of expecting the worst, but... Say about a year, best. maybe. Uh, I don't really expect a trailer anytime soon. I think the next most likely time would be yeah. around Summer Games Fest in early June. But then they did drop this random announcement on a random Tuesday, so... Who knows? Who knows what From Software is thinking, honestly. Anyway, before I fall asleep, I want to quickly talk to you guys about version 2 of my art book, which is Soul Arts, which is currently 10% off fuel until the end of March, as long as you enter the code SOULARTS10 at checkout. If you're unfamiliar, Soul Arts is designed to be the ultimate God, I kinda like for this. any cool. from Software's games. It enshrines Jesus. the hard work of over 100 artists and tells unique stories that are inspired by these games. The book is split into five chapters, and each oh, nice. asks the question, Sakura, Sakura what if Bloodborne 2 was real? What if you could explore other lands in Dark Souls? What other prosthetic tools could Sekiro have used? What is beyond the broken six Jesus, that's so cool. Demon Souls? And what did we think Elden Ring would be back when we knew nothing? I wonder how much that costs. If you bought during the Kickstarter, <laughs> you would have received version 1 of Soul Arts, which is still gorgeous with glossy pages and deep blacks and colors that look amazing in optimal lighting conditions. But version 2 uses a thicker, more matte paper that brings a few more details out of the darkness and makes for a slightly easier reading experience. But I love it's art, the same dude. Book in the end even if it is a little bit thicker. And again, it's 10% off for a very limited time, so make use of that by using the discount link in the description. While oh, you can. cool! But thank you, as always, for watching.